Are you curious about how the VFX was done on The Last of Us? You'd be surprised to find out that over the course of 18 months, 535 VFX shots were captured with a crew of 650 people. And most of the time, Bella and Pedro were acting in front of blue screens in a more or less empty set. So how did they get it to be so smooth? Well, let's find out. One of the most utilized techniques in the show, when you're looking at all those moss-covered slanted buildings, the disheveled cityscape, or even the highway Joel and Ellie traveled on that seemed a little too empty. Yeah, that was all blue screen. And I gotta give props to Bella Ramsey. When they were gazing off at the skyline in the Firefly Hospital Wing, they were literally just staring at a blank blue screen, talking about how stellar the view was. But man, you can't deny that for you. Luckily, there weren't any infected rushing up to ruin the moment. Speaking of, let's talk prosthetics. I don't know about you, but I love practical effects, especially when Barry Gower's involved. Like, if you're a Stranger Things fan, you might recognize his name. He's responsible for the prosthetic look of the season four villain, Vecna. Barry designed the prosthetics that gave us the clickers, but didn't stray very far from Neil Druckmann's original designs for the video game. We started off with a lot of preliminary concept art. We were using that as a stepping stone. And the clickers were also just a bunch of actors who were huge fans of the video game. They were familiar with the movements of the clickers, so they were more than stoked to get plastered with prosthetics and get into character as one. I found them sort of beautiful. They were beautiful. Luckily for them though, they didn't have to get a full body prosthetic cast like Adam Basil, AKA our resident bloater. One of the most difficult infected enemies in the game. Like I couldn't wait to see it on screen. The bloater was actually a six foot six stuntman named Adam Basil. And the costume he was wearing, it was a full 80 pounds. Like, of course there was a little bit of CGI sprinkled on in post-production to polish it off, but Adam was in full on bloater mode underneath a ton of latex and foam rubber. So the first step to get the costume was to take a cast of Basil's entire body and then follow that up with modeling clay to create the prosthetics. Gino Acevedo, who worked on the Lord of the Rings franchise, was also heavily involved in the bloater design. He figured out all of the proportions, some of the growths on the body and used references from the game and combined them with what was able to be practically made with a prosthetic suit. What did you think of the bloater reveal? Do you think they should have used more CGI? Like, it's clear they have the skills for it. So obviously the blue screen isn't a magic canvas that creates landscapes and scenes on its own. It requires major creative skills to create those buildings and landscapes. So there were three main techniques, a build of full CGI destroyed city buildings, a build of non-destroyed buildings that could be used to simulate various destruction states, and of course, a huge reliance on map painting with camera projection mapping. So often those three techniques would be like combined to create scenes like the state house explosion. But one thing you might be surprised about that wasn't digitally created, the giraffe was a real animal actor named Nabo. That doesn't mean there weren't a ton of visual effects in this scene though, like the setup alone took an entire month. It was mostly so the giraffe could get comfortable in a different environment surrounded by a bunch of new people. So yeah, the giraffe was real, but the environment was not. It was fully created with CGI. And like, it was one of the most complicated scenes to capture. The visual effects supervisor, Alex Wayne, isolated the giraffe on set, as well as the extra giraffes in the background, so that everything else in the background could be computer generated. So like, it's hard to tell while watching the show what CGI and what's not, especially when it came to the city's digital map. The reason why all of the digital mappings look so real and on point is because they used actual photography from all those cities to create the digital layout. Like the visual effects team brought on specifically for the show's environment took scheduling photography trips to Boston. So they would have every exact reference they need. They studied abandoned structures, collapsed buildings and vehicles that have been exposed to the elements and analyzed exactly how degradation happens under different conditions. They used all these references to create the digital world we got to see on the show. Not without major struggle in some areas though. So easily one of the most difficult environmental shots to bring to life. This was the scene at the beginning of episode two that they called 
the hair salon scene. The scene was complex because they felt that they needed an awe-inspiring moment when Ellie walks out into open daylight as we all see the city for the first time. The visual effects team was forced to think outside the box here, as every building was meticulously damaged and detailed. And they also had to study the lighting in that particular location of the city to be able to replicate it with CGI. It was really tough stuff that is easily overlooked by the casual viewer. The Last of Us without VFX is still majorly impressive. The use of prosthetics for the clickers and the bloaters is insane and terrifying. While the CGI for all of these skylines and buildings is so smooth, you'd really have no idea how much movie magic is involved. And like, I was also happy to find out that the giraffe wasn't CGI just a brilliant actor. So what's your favorite visual effect from the show? 